Yes, sir, what's your name? Kyle. Hey, Kyle, go ahead. Uh, I was just wondering, uh, atheists, uh, their main point is in evolution. Like, that's what they believe. Mm -hmm. You didn't really talk about that mm -hmm. at all. So I was just wondering how or what way do you uh, disprove the theory of evolution from a biblical and scientific standpoint? Okay, we have a couple of chapters in the book on that, so I'll just give you the two-minute answer. First thing, when you talk about evolution, you have to ask people, what do you mean by evolution? Because the word can mean so many different things. If it means change over time, count me in, we see that. If you mean microevolution, adaptation within a type, count me in, we see that. But if you mean molecules to man without any intelligence, count me out because I don't think there's evidence for it. In fact, I think there's evidence against it. Let me just give you a few reasons to believe that the Darwinian, neo-Darwinian view of the world doesn't make sense. Number one, believe it or not, is the fossil record. The major body plans appeared instantaneously, virtually, in the fossil record called the Cambrian explosion. Um, they just pop into existence, it seems, without any fossil precursors. This is what uh, Stephen Meyer talks about in his book called Darwin's Doubt, because this is the doubt Darwin had. He said, look, why aren't all these geological strata filled with all these intermediate uh, uh, types if my view is correct? And he said, well, if we keep searching the geological strata, one day we're going to find all these intermediate types. Well, we've been searching it for 150 years, and we don't find that. Uh, also, there's something called irreducible complexity that Things can't evolve in a gradual manner and still have function. All the parts need to be there at the same time in order to have something that's in working order. Also, there's a new discovery, relatively new, called epigenetic information. And epigenetic information is the structure of the cell. They used to think that DNA was destiny, that if you could alter DNA, you could get any body type you want. Now we know that's not true. You can mutate DNA from now till doomsday. You'll never get a new body plan because you need the structure of the body plan, not just the DNA, and DNA doesn't give you the structure. In fact, um, you could liken DNA to a software program and liken epige epigenetic information to uh, the wood and nails and wires and cement that puts together this room. The software might be the, or DNA might be the software that gives you the plan to create the room, but in order to create the room, you need hard materials to do so and DNA doesn't give you the hard materials. Uh, there's genetic limits to change, that's another problem. Um, even using all of our intelligence to breed, say, different types of dogs, we can't break the genus of dogs. We run into the gen genetic limits. Well, if we can't, using all our intelligence, break genetic limits, why should we expect an unintelligent process to do so? I don't think we should. But let me hasten to say this. Let's say, for the sake of argument, that macroevolution's true that the Darwinists are right, that this Darwinian viewpoint is true. Does that mean God does not exist or Jesus didn't rise from the dead? No. So even if they're right, it doesn't affect whether or not Christianity is true. It might create problems for biblical inerrancy in the Old Testament, but it doesn't mean that God doesn't exist or Jesus didn't rise from the dead. And let me say one last thing about this. Even if macroevolution is true, it requires God. Why? Well, because you need a universe in order to have biological evolution. <laughs> and you need the, the laws of nature to be what they are to drive evolution, and that requires a mind. I just have a question about the age of the Earth. I've kind of been watching some of your videos, and uh -huh. um, I know that you know it's absolutely at least 55 years old. No, I'm actually convinced it's at least 58 years old. Oh, 58 now. Yes, I'm getting so older it's old. now. Yeah. Um, but it's also not a central issue to salvation, mm -hmm. which I agree with. Mm -hmm. But... At the same time, I think it can be a central issue to somebody who's maybe an evolutionist or an atheist who the only leg that they have to stand on to prove evolution is that it's 13.8 billion years old. So I just kind of wonder, is that something that you've studied more to get more truth out of that? Because I think... You Let me say this, that regardless of whether evolution is true or not... Mm -hmm. Let's just say for the sake of argument, it's true. I don't think it's true, but let's say macroevolution is true. Right. What does that do to Christianity? The, Not right. much, right. right? You still got God. You still got Jesus rising from the dead. So it's kind of a side issue that we, we discuss. Mm -hmm. But to try and say, I'm not going to say the universe is 13.8 billion years old because that might help evolution is kind of an, a, a motive that shouldn't be a part of your calculus. If it is 13.8 billion years old, it is, regardless of whether or not it helps evolution, right? 
but it doesn't help evolution. Why? Because the longer period of time you have, the more nature randomizes things. I mean, I mean, think about it this way. Uh, suppose uh, we took up a, uh, a plane filled with confetti over this campus and we dropped it out from a thousand feet, red, white, and blue co confetti. What would the uh, chances it would it would uh, spell the American flag or form the American flag on the quad? Not very good. You say, well, give it more time. Let's take it up to 10,000 feet. It's going to be even less of a chance, right? Because the more time that goes on, the more time the second law of thermodynamics has to randomize things rather than bring order to things. Now, it's true. Once you have a living thing, you can get order by taking energy from outside that living thing. But before you have any living things, the longer things go on, the more random things get. You see, nature will take a building like this and turn it into a pile of bricks, but nature will never take a pile of bricks and turn it into a building. That's one of the biggest problems with macroevolution. They have no idea where life came from, and yet they're just assuming they have life, and then they go from that, that point. If scientists, um, scholars and whatnot, if they're so smart and they really want the truth, why are they so married to evolution when there are so many you know, strong arguments um, that go against it? Why I do think... they reject it? Well, I, I, there's probably a number of reasons that people believe in macroevolution. They've been taught it. They, it's, it's the best um, explanation from a naturalistic perspective we have, even though it's got a lot of holes in it. Um, and also, it's based on a worldview that miracles don't occur. It, they're presupposing that God doesn't exist. And they, they have to operate that way when they go into the laboratory they think they have to have this what's called methodological naturalism that they have their method when they do science presupposes that there's no intelligence out there okay and so when they're looking for a cause they're always going to assume it's a natural cause even if the evidence points to an intelligent being so it's more of a philosophical presupposition than it is based on interpreting the evidence properly and in the book stealing from god we have a chapter on science the title of the chapter is Science doesn't say anything. Scientists do. You see, all data needs to be gathered. All data needs to be interpreted. And that's what scientists do, not science. And that's why when you hear somebody on TV saying, science says we have... No, science doesn't say a word. Scientists, I just saw a headline today. It said something like, uh, and I don't care what you, that, that, whether you think global climate change is true or not. That's not my point. But the point is, it said, we have 12 years before we're going to... If we don't do something about climate change um, be, be, be before the end, doomsday, right? Well, you know, people said that stuff in the 1970s, and then in the 1980s, and then in the 1990s, and then the 2000s. They keep saying, we got 10 years, 12 years, and here we still are, right? It's not science that's telling us this, it's scientists, and they may have it wrong.